start in the right place. It says that, no, James 4 verse 8, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. That is a promise. And what worship does automatically when we focus our hearts and our minds on our spirit and our spirit on God, then the Holy Spirit responds immediately to that which we have reached out to him. I always see it like this. It's like um, my husband is a, a tall guy. Yeah? He's like a daddy, a tall daddy. And I always see that picture. We uh, were pastoring a Zulu church in KZN. And Kara was still a small little baby. I think she was just almost one year old. And he would be preaching. Uh, he'd be standing in front and he'd be bringing the word. But Kara, sometimes she wouldn't like to sit. Um, yeah, let's rather do the other mic. She wouldn't like to sit still. So she was crawling all over church. And it used to annoy me because I felt like she was disturbing him. But you know what? When she, when she broke loose and she ran to her daddy. One, two. When she broke loose and she ran to her daddy, the first thing she would do, you know, you've seen those little babies. She puts up her hands and she's like, Daddy, Daddy, pick me up. Daddy, pick me up. And I mean, he's tall and she's a little baby. So he's up here and she's going, Daddy, pick me up. And he, in his dad heart, in his father heart, he just couldn't resist it. There was like nothing could stop him at that moment. I will send the usher to say, go fetch the baby, go fetch the baby. He will just go, oh, my daughter, and he will just pick her up. And then he will, he will preach with her in the arm. Um, because to God, that is so irresistible. He cannot resist you when you worship him. Um, Don Moen always used to say, God tolerates me when I work. But he loves me when I sing. He loves me when I sing. So worship opens up that atmosphere of drawing near to God. And when we talk about the prophetic, um, we cannot be prophetic without being close to God. Because when we're prophetic, what we are saying in, in essence is that our ear is on God's heart and on God's mouth. And how can I get close to God's heart? This one way worship when I worship him I'm close to him and that's what I really want to try and just convey that a little bit and also there's a lot of other things that happen in the spirit dimension when we begin to worship isn't it it's a beautiful uh, a picture of the love between ourselves and our Lord and and that's really what I've wanted to share so I wanted to start with that that image of you reaching out to your heavenly father and at the same time he's reaching down to you because he wants to be close to you as well and he wants to pick you up and he wants to bring you close so he can whisper in your ear and he will start with things like I love you my child you are beautiful uh, you are unique. You are special to me. I died for you. And all of those things happen in those intimate moments of worship. So that's where uh, uh, a prophetic worship and uh, prophecy in music is very important. So I wanted us to start with that. And we're going to sing another worship song at the end, just like a, a small activation. But for now, just can you just close your eyes and I'm just going to say a prayer for us. Father God, I thank you for tonight, Lord. Thank you that you, in your word, promise that if we draw close to you, then you draw close to us, Father. I thank you that right now you are very close, Lord. And I pray as I share this word about uh, music and prophetic and worship, Lord, that it will be opening up new dimensions in our spiritual lives, Father. Thank you that you love each and every one of us, that you care for us, that you are here, Lord, uh, and that you, you care, you, you want to impart something special tonight. And I pray that you help me, Lord Jesus, to open up the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I wanted to just very, very, first of all, Pastor Henry, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I'm very excited. Obviously, my husband and I, we, we live to worship. I always tell people, I do other things um, as a job. You know, I can do work. But to me, worship is not work. 
it's just who I am. It's, it's my, yeah, it's who, it's my, who I am. It's my personality. And um, what we see is that uh, worship, music, and prophecy go hand in hand all throughout the Bible. Because worship attracts the presence of God. And where the presence of God is, um, there is a platform where the Holy Spirit is welcome. So once the Holy Spirit is welcome, we can see that He begins to release His spiritual gifts. He will release prophecy, He will release healing, He will release words of knowledge, words of wisdom, when that atmosphere of worship is created. Um, what worship also does, remember, it changes our perspective from the earthly things to the heavenly things. So we come into awareness of the Holy Spirit. Actually, did you know that the Holy Spirit is always with you? Always. When you're driving in your car, when you're at your workplace, when you're in your school, when you're lying in the bath, but you're not always aware of Him. He's always there, but you're not always aware. So sometimes when we worship, we take that decision to say, Holy Spirit, I know you are here. I make a choice to become aware of you. I become aware of you. He's always with you. But take a minute in your day and say, Lord, let me become aware of you. Surrender to him. Lord, I surrender to you. Dwell with me. I wanted to just use one or two uh, scriptures about the examples of prophecy and music in the Bible. Prophecy and music have a very close connection. Um, because when we worship and we sing, the Spirit of God comes close and we can begin to see the gifts manifest. One of the most famous scriptures, and this is such an interesting scripture because even today, a lot of people who operate uh, in the prophetic will get criticized when they say, um, call a musician, let somebody play piano. And do you know that that is biblical? Um, I'm going to look at that scripture in 2 Kings 3 verse 15. And what happens in this verse, it says that the kings of Israel and Judah are about to go out to battle. And they are looking for a prophet to give them a word to say, are they going to make it or are they not? And the prophet in this instance is Elisha. And they are looking for a message from God. And Elisha is actually being a little bit stubborn at this point. He's a little bit angry because he doesn't like the king. And the king was consulting other prophets as well. So he comes in there and he already kind of has a bit of an attitude about him. Saying something like, oh, really, do you really need me now? Isn't it too late to ask me now to give you a word? But Elisha obliges. I want to read from 2 Kings 3 verse 14. It says, but, okay, I'm going to just preface it a little bit. Verse 14 says, Elisha said, as surely as the Lord Almighty lives whom I serve, if I did not have respect for the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not pay any attention to you. So he's kind of angry in his spirit a little bit. Um, but even though he's angry, he makes a statement. He says, but now bring me a harpist. In the old version, it has such an in interesting word. It says, call a minstrel. Okay. Now a minstrel was somebody who played a musical instrument. So what he does, he calls the harpist. And while the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha. And he began to prophesy and he says, this is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. So there's something that happens when we begin to worship God and the atmosphere is created, whether it be by a song, uh, uh, words, music or instrument, and the Spirit of God begins to move. Another wonderful example of um, worship and prophecy in the Bible are the Psalms. Now the Psalms take up such a big part of our Bible they were songs that were sung in the temple and in other places by God's people. Now the Psalms, if you read them, some of them are beautiful. Some of them are worship songs. Some of them are messages, encouragement. But did you know that some of the Psalms are prophetic songs that were written about Jesus, about the coming Messiah? So they were actually singing those prophecies over themselves and singing it over their, um, their, their uh, nation, 
about the coming of the Lord. One of my favorite songs, Psalms is Psalm 81. It's such an interesting psalm because in this psalm, it actually gives even specific instructions of what the instruments must do. It says there in Psalm 81, uh, verse 2, sing praises, oh, bring, begin the music, strike the timbrel, play the melodious harp and lyre. Now, a timbrel is a tambourine. Ne? So he actually says to the uh, uh, musicians, beat the tambourine. Start. Start with that beat. That's where we're going to go. Blow the ram's horn and call a festival. This is required, a decree for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. And then he begins to, to say uh, what needs to happen. When God went out against Egypt, he established it as a statute for Joseph. I heard an unknown voice say, and this is where the prophetic word starts. Now I remove the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. Free your hands from heavy tasks. So they're starting out with this praise. And the next moment, the prophetic word goes on. And it says, I will take the load from your shoulders. I will free your hands. So it's like that prophecy and the music and the song, all of it comes together so, so beautifully. Um, and sometimes it can even be a warning that can come through a song. Did you know that a song can be a warning? In verse 8, he says, listen to me, O my people. Listen while I give you stern warnings. Don't serve any other foreign gods. Uh, in your distress, you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thunder cloud. I tested you at the waters of Meriba. Hear me, my people, and I will warn you. So it's a warning that's coming through a song. Did anybody ever sing you a warning? Now, people don't like prophets to give warnings to say be careful or don't do this or don't do that here they are literally singing a warning to the people of Israel telling them be careful um, let's go to the next uh, verse if you would only listen to me Israel you shall have no foreign God among you you shall not worship any God other than me I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt so he's even warning them in the form of a song so you, maybe we should start singing warnings, Pastor. <laughs> the Lord says, be careful, be careful. Stay away, stay away from sin. And it will be maybe more acceptable if we sing a warning to someone. But the, the word of the Lord is so incredible. Um, the role of the prophetic is to rebuke, to encourage, to mourn. Uh, God knows that music is powerful. And he tries to communicate those things through songs uh, to his people. I want to jump to the New Testament. Now, I don't know if I sent you the scripture. Please forgive me. In the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13 to 15, Paul is speaking about prophecy and about speaking in tongues. And he says the following. For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Next verse. So that what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. In this verse, it says in the Amplified, I will pray in tongues. I will pray in understanding. I will sing in tongues. I will sing in understanding. So we can sing. And sometimes, did you know, while you are singing in tongues, you might be releasing a prophetic word to someone. But you don't know that. And, and that is something that nowadays people don't practice that as much as they used to. It's praying in the Spirit. Praying in understanding. I want to get back to that verse. So make a note of that one. There was a song that we used to sing there. Can we sing it? Oh, it's the it's the old one. It goes like this. Are you ready? Put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praise in the spirit and with understanding. 
Oh, magnify the Lord. Once more. Put on the garments of grace for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praise in the spirit and with understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. So this verse says that we can worship in tongues and we can worship in English or in Afrikaans or in Zulu or in Sutu. We must pray in the spirit. We must praise. We must sing in the spirit. Now, that was just a short, short introduction of what the word says. Um, ways to release a prophetic word. We see there's many ways that prophetic words can be released through words spoken or written, prayers, songs, poems. So you can have somebody stand up and sing a prophetic word to you. Isn't that something beautiful? Um, they are actually uh, one of the ministers that we really enjoyed um, watching. I think he's Pastor Nauni, is uh, Pastor Kim Clement. And he used to sing prophetic words out and sing whatever the Holy Spirit laid in his heart. And it could be a, a warning to someone or a message. Um, it could be encouragement. Prophetic words can be exhortation, confirmation. It can be correction. It can just be glorifying God. Like when we sang just now and we said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. What we're doing, we are glorifying Him, magnifying Him and seeing that picture of something to come, isn't it? Because that shows what's happening in heaven. That vision was received by the prophet and he said, this is what it looks like. Now we come here on earth and we begin to sing, Holy, holy, holy. And immediately what we see, we see that picture of ourselves there in heaven with the angels and we're singing holy, holy, holy. So something is happening in the spirit dimension. Uh, uh, there's another thing that also we do when we declare. We declare uh, a word and scripture over groups or congregations. Um, a lot of uh, worship songs, actually, that we sing nowadays, we think that a worship is a slow song. But a worship song is actually a song that glorifies God. And a lot of the songs that we sing as worship, actually, on uh, strictly speaking, is not worship. Because it's declarations that we make over uh, our congrega congregation, over our people, over our families. And we need to know that that's okay. We can use our worship as a prophetic action to declare things. I'm thinking of that one song that's so famous that everybody used to sing. It's called, I Speak Jesus. Remember that one? I speak Jesus on the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus for my family. I don't even know the words. Over, over every enemy, Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. And that's not actually worship. Did you realize that? We're not glorifying Jesus in that song. We're not saying, Jesus, you are holy or beautiful. We are declaring something. We are prophesying over our families. Um, there's a lot of beautiful songs like that. Uh, uh, raise a hallelujah. I declare I will have victory. There will be breakthrough. Uh, uh, another fa uh, fa uh, favorite one that we like to sing. We like to sing. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, 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 to break every chain. So do you see how we are using this music to make declarations, prophetic statements over ourselves, over our families, over our children? And sometimes uh, uh, worship and song is a way to release the prophetic at that moment we might be in the service we might be worshiping and the holy spirit just says right now begin to release that song uh, begin to sing that chorus i am free i'm delivered i am healed 
whatever the Holy Spirit is moving you in. And that is just one way uh, that the Spirit of God can move through worship and the prophetic. What we need to do, we need to be sensitive. We need to know how and when to release this prophetic worship. This isn't for everybody necessarily. But as a child of God, He's given us His word in our mouth as a weapon that we can use against the enemy. And that's why worship is so powerful. Because God's word in my mouth is just as powerful as His word in His mouth. And that's really where we, we can begin to see that there's so much of an overlap between the two uh, areas. Amen. Isn't this exciting? Eh? It's very exciting. That's why I love worship, because you are moving in dimensions that you don't even know that you, you're just busy worshiping, and the next moment you feel, yeah, Holy Spirit, I'm going. Lord, take me wherever you want me to go. I want to move with you. Amen. Now, I wanted to make it practical. So what I did, I just put a few steps. I'm, I apologize. I didn't send the email. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and see if we can send it on WhatsApp or another way. But how to practice prophetic worship? Number one, we have to be prayed in. We have to be prayed in and we have to surrender. I can't just turn up and hope for the best and say, oh, well, let's see what happens. I have to be prepared. I have to make room for the Holy Spirit and be available and listen to His prompting. Um, that is very, very important. We can't excel in, in the prophetic if we always want to control everything and we want to be so strict. Sometimes we have to step back and say, Holy Spirit, come and do what you want to do in this worship. Then number two, praying in tongues. Very important. We are already touched on that. Singing in the Spirit. Just sing in your tongue. Just say, just sing in your tongue and if you're not there yet practice it practice it it gets easier the more you do it while you're singing in tongues you might be re releasing a prophetic word and you don't even know it that's how the holy spirit works number three Ask the Holy Spirit how He would like you to worship God the Father. Now this for me has been a key, especially in worship leading. There was a time when I was leading worship, but I always felt like I never get a breakthrough. Things were going well, but then I, 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 it felt like things weren't flowing up to a certain point. And, and what I began to pray, now this is a secret Nobody knows this. The only person who knows this is uh, uh, my husband and Vili. Because I shared this with Vili because we're worshiping together. I began to pray and I said, Holy Spirit, show me how I must worship the Father. Show me what song does the Father want to hear today. What song can I sing Him that is going to please Him, that's going to make Him smile on me. And what's amazing is that the Holy Spirit knows the Father. He knows what the Father desires. And if I ask Him to show me what does He want me to sing, then it's, it's more natural. It's in line. That's also why we sing in the Spirit, because the Word says if we sing in the Spirit, we sing the will of God. Exactly. But for your sake, I'm not always singing in tongues. For your sake, I also sing in English. So I will say, Holy Spirit, show me how, what must I sing to please my Father? You quiet your own heart and you listen to His prompting. Sometimes He will show you a song that you know and you will just sing that out. Sometimes He will give you maybe a new song, some words that you haven't heard before or a melody that you haven't heard before. Sometimes he will tell you to take up a guitar or play a tambourine or hit on a drum. But God knows what he wants. And, and what's amazing, especially for worship leading, I can just use this morning's example. And I do this humbly. The, the, this whole week, while we were preparing, the Holy Spirit just brought that song to me. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. I said, Holy Spirit, is that what you want? Do you want us to sing that song on Sunday morning? And the Holy Spirit said, yes. 
And when I began to prepare my worship set for this morning, I sat with it and I said, Lord, thank you that you've given me the song, Holy Spirit. I'm going to put it in the set. And when I get together with the brothers and sisters, I know your anointing is going to be on this song because that's what you said you want to hear. And that's beautiful. Those of you who are here this morning, you felt that in the spirit. So it means we don't just turn up here on a Sunday and hope for the best. We've been praying the whole week, prophetically asking, Holy Spirit, what do you want? What do you want? What, what we will, let us hear your voice. Then number four, so ask the Holy Spirit, how would he like you to worship the Father? Have courage when the moment is right. Uh, um, sing out what he's put in your heart. Confirmation is key. A lot of times, if I'm unsure, maybe I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying he wants to heal people. And uh, I'll be standing up here and I just get that chorus in my mind of, um, I am the God that he loved thee. That's too high. Let's go for I am the Lord, your healer. I sent your word and healed my disease. I am the Lord, your healer. So I will wait. I will wait. And that song might come into my mind. And I will wait to say, Is it, am I right? And then if I start singing, other people will sing along. And they will feel in their spirit, this is the right song for this moment. And we use that confirmation to say, okay, this is where the Spirit of God wants to go. But have courage. Be sensitive. This really isn't about uh, blessing others or blessing myself or looking good. This is really about Him, what He wants to do. And, and we have to allow the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Uh, because the anointing to sing prophetically can be on anybody. While we're standing here on the stage, those who practice with me, those who are prayed in, remember that's what I said, we prayed in, we prepared. It might be that at that moment, the anointing might be on someone else to sing out prophetically. Or the Holy Spirit might be speaking to them and then I give them a chance. As it says in the scripture, it might be that the Spirit can be on an instrument. While someone is playing, you can feel, wow, something is happening. And we have to be sensitive. Um, God wants to do uh, something in that moment. It can be healing. It can be deliverance. It can be salvation. We have to declare by faith what is showing us. And this is not for worship leaders only. It's for you when you're at home and you're walking in your house and you're busy singing or, or just praying. And the next moment, the Holy Spirit drops a song in your spirit. Immediately begin to sing that song. Sing it out loud so everybody can hear. This is what God is doing. He's using my sound. He's using my worship. He's using my adoration to draw me closer to Him. And sometimes even to be a blessing or to give a message to someone else. Amen. That was a lot of teaching. Okay. But what we're going to do, we're going to stand up and we're going to practice. We're going to sing a little bit. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to just flow through us. And, and really... Um, just hear his heart. Hear his heart. And as you hear his heart, I pray that you will get the courage to say what you hear. What is on his heart, let it come out of your mouth. Whether it be praises or worship or adoration, remember, it's not out of yourself. It's through the Spirit that you are doing this. So you basically just have to get out of the way. Sometimes I say, Lord, just let me get more out of the way so you can do more what you want to do so i want to invite you all to stand i'm going to go back to the guitar the song that we're going to do is not a song that you know but that there's a reason why we're doing that because i don't want you to sing with your mind i want you to sing from your spirit sing what the holy spirit is showing you and just worship him just worship him
so complicated Lord when it's just about us reaching out our hands and touching our daddy and touching his heart and him lifting us up into the place where he is Father God tonight I want to ask Lord God take us into new dimensions of worship Lord take us into places where we haven't been before Father I pray right now for every heart to be open for every mouth to be activated Lord Lord that people will begin to release worship and prophetic words, Lord, up unto your throne. Father, let it carry, let it carry, let it carry. Father, we lay down everything that is not from you tonight, Lord. And we say we make room. We make room for you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we make room, and I will, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your name is better your way is better shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better shake up the ground shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground, shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Now we'll make room for you.
invitation tonight if you want to put that new song in here don't you want to come to the front and we'll pray for you maybe there's something that's stopping you 